Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take when everybody's on here. I don't, well, I'm not sure who else we have, but when we have everybody here who's joining us today, I want to take a screenshot. Be like our <laughs> final. Yeah. <laughs> For posterity. For yeah. posterity, exactly. <laughs> the um, Brady Bunch of the art scene. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so I know that, um, I know Pat is not joining us tonight. So I think we are missing Carol and Judith. Judith. So we'll give him another minute. Now I can't get that out of my head that you said that, Michael. I want everybody to be like, do, 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 do. <laughs> look down, look up, depending on which blog you That's right. Now I want to change my view so that we're all in <laughs> stacks. <laughs> Is there distracting music coming from my area? Okay, good. It's low enough. I have a um, one munchkin on the scene for the next 10 minutes. Um, all right, Carol is here. I just need to move her over from the attendee section. Okay, and I think um, Ruth, whenever you're ready, why don't we get Carol come in and- Here we go. Okay, Hello. welcome. I, I call the meeting to order and uh, let's let us call the roll. So, um, uh, Commissioner Core Here. Commissioner French? Here. Commissioner Fisk? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. And Commissioner Clinton? Here. And we have uh, our ever-present and hard-working Rachel and Jesse. Hello, welcome. And we should note for the record that um, it looks like currently Commissioners Quinn and Alternate Williams are not present. Yes. All right. So we um, will the next item approval of the agenda. So can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Okay. I'll make a motion. Okay, we have second. Okay, we have uh, we have Commissioner Clinton making a motion. Commissioner French seconding it. Motion, and we have everyone saying aye. 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 Right. aye. The agenda is approved. Moving on, two brief announcements from our staff. That would be me. <laughs> so um, we we will be having um, you as you all know or do, maybe don't know you're on different term limits depending on when you came in to be commissioner. So um, the the regular term is four years, which seems like a long time but goes by very fast. And um, so currently you should see in your agenda that um, those of you who have terms ending this coming June are commissioners Fisk. Quinn, Santer, Smith, and Williams. And those who have terms ending in June of 2025 are Commissioners Clinton, Core, and French. So you will be asked pretty soon by the city clerk, um, for those of you whose terms expire in June, um, you will be asked, if you've only served one term so far, you'll be asked if you'd like to serve a second term. And then um, if you'd like to serve a second term, most likely, unless there's some like unforeseen thing that happens between now and June, we will welcome you with open arms to serve a second term. Um, Commissioner Smith, I believe that your term is up then. Um, and so there will be, you know, one or several spots open that the city council will be recruiting for. So it's more just to give you a heads up to expect that you should be receiving communications from the city clerk about that soon. And feel free if you have questions to ask me. Um, if you do know anybody that you think would be a good person to recommend to apply, definitely reach out to them or let me know. And that's about it on that. Thanks. Any questions about that right now? Okay. I, my question is, how did that time go by so fast? Uh, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it seems like such a long time and just, yeah. 
COVID. I would say that's yeah, COVID. COVID. That's it. COVID. <laughs> that was it. Do we? Okay. So moving on. Um, do we have any public commenters? No, we do not. Okay. Do not. Okay. Moving on to the consent calendar, which were the minutes and uh, some recommended arts and cultural fair fund proposals, which I did read and I'm excited about. So there we go. I don't know if anyone else did. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And so we need to approve those, right? We have a, we need a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Clinton makes a motion to approve. Anyone second? Oh. <laughs> so actually, um, it was uh, yeah. Commissioner Core made the first. Oh, Core. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner yeah. Core yeah. and Commissioner Clinton is second. Okay. And yeah. so okay. we are, and everyone in favor, say aye, please. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion is carried. The consent calendar is consented to. The minutes approved and moving on to item six. Okay. So, election. You want me to take this one? Yeah, why don't you take this one since <laughs> I've never been involved in this except as the recipient of the. <laughs> So um, it Sorry is for the typo. Oh, I can't even see it. <laughs> the big oh, chair, that could be the a big chair. <laughs> so um, at the beginning of each calendar year, it is um, the commission elects their upcoming chair and vice chair. And currently that is um, Commissioner Santer as the chair and Commissioner Smith as the vice chair. Um, so you can, if there's anybody who's interested in taking over these roles, um, you're welcome to either throw your hat in the ring or nominate somebody, or if these two would like to continue serving in their current capacity um, until the need arises to elect another person, um, that's fine. Or it's it's kind of up to the group how you'd like to move forward. And, um, and you definitely can retain the same people in those positions if you'd like right now or change them up. So... I will hand that back to Ruth. To well, I just have one question about that, which is that um, since I guess the Commissioner Smith's term is expiring in June, that would just mean that, um, so you have served, this is your second term. So that would mean that we would have to elect someone for the meeting following that for vice. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you stayed um, hypothetically for both of you, I mean, you both expire in June, like, Obviously, if you stay for a second term, you wouldn't be. But um, yeah, if you if you wanted to, you could. Uh, if you needed to at that time, you could reelect a replacement. Okay. All right. Well, I intend to stay for another term if I am allowed. I, this because that was my first term, so I'm allowed, right? And so, so I'm I'm happy to continue. And and what about you, Commissioner Smith? Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to continue too, but if someone has a burning desire, I will step down. <laughs> I think they're doing a great job. Yeah, I second that. I think you guys are doing great. Love to... I, I have no problem if someone wants to be vice chair, go for it. <laughs> it's a great position. <laughs> a sales pitch. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you, and also, you know, since you, since this is the, since this is going to come in just a few months, um, you know, you can think about if somebody doesn't want to step into that role immediately, you know, we have a couple months to figure out who that might be come June or between now and then. Okay. So, uh, since I'm involved, it seems a little confusing. How does this work? <laughs> So one of you can, um, so if you're both willing to stay on and continue in that capacity, somebody else there can just um, nominate 
the two of you to stay on and then you just need to vote. Okay. Or if somebody so, wants to compete, you can throw your name in and compete with one of these wonderful commissioners. Uh, would someone like to make a nomination? Yes, I'd be happy to. I would like to nominate that we continue with our uh, with our uh, fearless leaders as chair and vice chair, uh, Commissioner Santer and Smith. Okay, does someone want to second that nomination? Okay. I'll second. Okay, we have we have Commissioner Frisk made a nomination. We had two people seconding, Commissioner, oh, Frisk, yeah. Commissioner Clinton, and um, all in favor of maintaining the status quo until June. Aye. Aye. Okay. So let's. So can I um ask for yeah. that to be more specific? That we elect for the year, and then when we need to come back in and and replace um Commissioner Smith's position, we'll do that. So let's just make the election as like the election for the year. Is that okay? okay. That is that is good. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. So sounds good. So so moved. So seconded. So passed. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you for you. stepping up. Yeah. Thanks to both Thank of you. you. I know this is always extra responsibility and um and I'm very appreciative of taking on these roles. So thanks. You're very welcome. And one of you is gonna <laughs> think about who wants to be the brave soul that steps up in June. So <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so I can, um, we have a, a pretty nice straightforward agenda this evening. So I'll just give you some highlights. The, um, the group that was screening the ARPA individual artist grants, um, individual artist grant applications, which is uh, Jesse, me, Commissioner Santer and Commissioner French have pretty much wrapped up that work. It's, I just am the last loose pin in that and I need to go back and review some final pieces, but um, there's really, really thorough. We had 74 applications for what we were estimating to be around 50 um, slots. I don't know, we have $50,000 to reward. And so we were kind of just ballparking that we thought we might, you know, like if we had 50 applicants, it would be about a thousand dollars each. We had 74 applicants and after really thorough reviewing, we probably will end up awarding somewhere between 40 and 45 grants after we kind of pulled out people that were uneligible. And um, I just wanted to say a tremendous amount of thought and went into that process uh, from the commissioners and especially from Jesse, who really, really kind of went through a lot of applications with a fine tooth comb and looked up additional information um, to really, really try to target the artists in our community who are both eligible and would most benefit from, um, from receiving these relief funds right now. So um, we should be announcing, it's not something that needs to come to the Arts Commission to vote on, so it's more informational. And um, sometime probably by the end of this week, we will be able to announce the final results of that. Um, and that information should be public information at that time. And then of course, we'll share it with you as well. Any questions I have, about that? I have a question mm -hmm. uh, about that. If we are awarding, because when we first did the initial pass, it looked like there were maybe about 50 people. But if you're if we're awarding fewer, does that mean we'll get to give more money to each person? Mm -hmm. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. And and actually, yeah. like um the two of you, because you're on the committee and Jesse and I, like there will be a final kind of communication before that's finalized. Um, mm -hmm. just making sure everybody's signed off on it. But yeah, so we still have the same amount of money. So it's nice because we will most likely be able to reward to award a little bit more money um, as well. Um, and it was great because it exposed us to a number of artists in the community who really weren't on our radar already. Um, and it's a great opportunity for us to reach out to them now and invite them to participate in Arts Alliance and make sure on, that they are on like calls for arts calls and things like that in the future. So, um, so it was a good process. And I think it's really the more that I'm sort of starting to learn about what's happened in different communities. I think the advocacy efforts in our community were really, um, really strong and really heard by our city council. And um, it's really lucky. I feel like we're, we're being able to put between this and the organizational grants right now, put a lot of money out into our community for the arts, which is hopefully going to really um, 
really pay off in, you know, helping artists feel supported in the community and helping them be more stable and sustainable here and helping them do more projects. So, yay. No, for the yay advocacy who, efforts that successfully. <laughs> for, for the artists who did not end up qualifying for it, was it often just because they were, you know, not local or what were some of the, the factors that, that, um, that made some of the applicants not, not qualify? Great question. Um, some of them were not local. And, you know, we did give opportunities to them to make a case if they weren't local. And, and there were actually a few exceptions that we did, you know, choose to award because they had circumstances that we felt made them still eligible. Um, some of them just weren't really artists in the terms that we were qualifying artists. They were more, um, I mean, we, we had a few that, that submitted applications who really were like cosmetic producers, like people who had kind of crafts that we wouldn't really qualify as arts practitioners in the community. Some of them were people that, while they were clearly, you know, very clearly practicing artists, they had just moved here in the last year. And we really tried to use the lens of like, were you a practicing artist in Davis prior to COVID and this impacted you? Or if, even though they were here during COVID, like we don't feel like based on what they shared with us that COVID really had an impact on them one way or the other. So we, we use a lot of, um, I mean, the, the rubric is really defines exactly how we, how we um, you know, graded them. So like if they were doing art and they weren't really generating income it, from it, the whole point of this was relief funds for people who lost income. And so um, those are kind of the primary reasons. And there was also financial need, which was mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah, there were, we, we did have them break down their household income and we did, um, we did decide that there were a few people who had self-identified having kind of the highest tier of household income. And so because this was meant to support artists who were um, in need of relief, if it looked like from the income they shared that they weren't actually in need of financial relief, um, we decided to award it to those who did look like they needed that. It was really challenging. It was not an easy, um, it was not an easy task. I mean, obviously we would love to award money to everyone making art in this community. Any other questions about that? Looks okay. like not. So um, the you already saw the latest or the most updated round of arts and cultural affairs fund applications on your consent calendar. We are continuing to get really fabulous applications for things. It's great. Um, we pretty soon will be wrapping up, you know, having available funds for this year. So that should slow down a little bit. Um, but it's it's nice. People are really stepping up, continuing to build on existing programs like Cherry Blossom Festival, Music Fest, but then also new programs coming forward. So, um, so that's going well. Any questions with Arts and Cultural Affairs Fund? Okay. I don't see any questions. Sorry, I don't see any questions. Okay. <laughs> I was just glancing through the the thank you the crowd. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I, I know I've said this before, but I just want to encourage you, the reason that we integrate all the links into the arts update is so that if you're not familiar with an event or an organization or an artist, that you can easily go link directly to their information. So um, I know it's time consuming, but to the best of your ability, go in and check these artists or these events out. And of course, obviously, if you can attend them, that's even better. Um, just so you're familiar with them and you know what you're funding um, and you know what's happening in the community and can kind of champion it in your circles. Um, and it's nice to see we are starting to get applications back in from organizations um, like Village Dance Davis, which actually I don't think that even was on the, that, that hasn't gone through the approval process yet. They've just, just submitted, but, um, getting grants in from groups and programs that were in existence before COVID and then just completely stopped um, altogether. And it's nice that they're being revived. It's great. So I'm excited to see more of those coming on board. Okay, that's all for grants. Rachel, if I can just interject yeah. for a second. Um, that was one of the other categories that um, a couple people who applied for the individual artist grants um, were more appropriate for it 
they they were really more applying for something that would be program specific. And so a couple of people, we had decided, well, this isn't appropriate to give you an individual grant, but we're going to recommend that you apply for an arts and cultural affairs program grant. Yeah, thanks. Excellent. Okay, so we are done with B, right? Anything else? Yeah, so um, next on here is Recology. So I'm just looking at the folks here. How, besides Commissioner Santer was, or I'm sorry, besides Commissioner Smith, was anyone else on the commission when the Recology item first was on the Arts Commission? <laughs> I don't know if I articulated that very well. Um, so no one's quite as old, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, so I put a brief history in the in the arts update, but just in a nutshell, um, about six years ago, I think. Uh, yeah, five or six years ago, the city recontracted with a new waste management company, and they went from what was the prior company to a contract with Recology, who is a California wide, um, actually even beyond California West Coast um, waste management company. Part of the requirement from the city was that they provide um, an award-winning artist in residence program that they have in Seattle, San Francisco, I believe San Jose, like a number of different places um, up and down the West Coast. So we had this amazing um, program put into place and um, we worked really closely for about a year with the Recology staff at their new location. Um, it's not new, but it's their new location where the, um, what's called the MRF, which is the location on Second Street where you bring like items to recycle, recycling. It's where the big facility, if you've ever been in there, um, where they compact everything into pallets and things like that. And they, when that property was handed over, there is a large, like, I think it's like 30 by 90 foot um, kind of warehouse space there. And Recology had committed to putting in uh, studios for the artists and their artists in residency program. And the way it worked is they they would work with a community advisory committee, which we put together and had compiled already with a with a great group of people. And then they would award, um, I think, annual or maybe every six months. Um, it was probably annual one or two artists in residence who would have access to these studio spaces. They were gonna set up a shop to provide them with tools and equipment and access to any of the things at the facility. And then because the space was so big, we talked about having it be also market rate artist studios, potentially like a maker space. So lots of great ideas and the whole thing was funded already. So it, we rolled it out to the point where we were just getting ready to start soliciting like, for artists to apply to it. And then there was a um, decision made by the city council. There was some kind of snafu with um, utility payer rates and they had to cut something. And so they made this sort of snap decision to cut the fund, the really small amount of funding the city had to contribute to this. Um, because I think there was a misunderstanding that the program hadn't actually started yet when really we've been in, in like production for about a year to the point where it came out to the public. So it was, tabled um, initially for a year. And then because of COVID, it just kind of got like completely lost. And just really recently, um, Commissioner Santer brought up to me, hey, what do you, you know, <laughs> I heard of this really cool program. And I was like, funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> um, and so it was great timing because when I reached out just to get a status report, it actually, aside from us, I think had like finally maybe been kind of getting back on track with the folks who are more involved with it. Um, it is still part of our contractual agreement with Recology to provide it. And so right now the status of it is that the, um, the staff from our department that interacts with Recology is working with their general manager to revisit um, like what the budget looks like for that and where it would come from. And so that's really exciting that it's something that's back on track in some way. So hopefully by, yeah, I know. So in between that, the previous Civic Arts Commission wrote a letter um, to the city council, like reinstating how important it was and why it would really be a really amazing thing to have in our community and how it puts us in connection with this, you know, West Coast wide award winning program, like all the great things about it, the potential for it to provide like another kind of creative hub in the community, 
Um, so hopefully at the next meeting or very soon, we will have more updated information about that um, and an opportunity to get it back into play. It's a, it would be a huge, huge win for us. It is, um, it's just a, a great piece of, it's a great building. It's a great location. It'll be a great opportunity to, um, you know, to really highlight some artists here. So, um, so that's, does anybody just preliminarily like with that information, have any questions up until this point about that? I, I just wanted to say one thing that when I mentioned to Rachel, I, someone had told me from San Francisco about this program and I did a bunch of research into it. And I thought, wouldn't it be so fabulous if we had this in Davis? So it was really perfect timing. And I'm very committed to making this sort of a goal for my next term as commissioner to get this completed and anyone who wants to help with that, whatever it takes, I'd love to put energy into it. I'm super excited about it. So. Yes. I'm in Ruth. Mm -hmm. I think it's such an incredible program. I would love to support however we can. Great. Commissioner Smith. Did you and likewise, um, even if I'm not on this commission, I would certainly love to, to be part of, of anything that has to do with um, promoting it. Um, and, you know, given that other places have done this and and have done so successfully, it seems like we could learn from their successes and make sure that, you know, we make ours even better. Yeah, the great thing about the program is it's not actually run by us. It's actually run by Recology. So they have curator, they have marketing for it. Um, you know, it's, we are involved with it and sort of act as like the community liaison. I mean, we helped put the advisory committee together and help kind of do the groundwork here, but it's, they actually have a whole system and a whole, you know, they know, they know how to do it already. So that's, it's great. It's great. Nice. So Exciting. cross your fingers, more, mm -hmm. hopefully more good news in the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, great. That's thrilling. Yeah, yeah. How but much money are we talking? It's been so long, I forget. So the amount that they cut out was thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> um, but I, I have a feeling that probably were some more structural issues about it at the time. Um, you know, there were some other ways to fund it that were discussed, and I, I kind of think it just was one of those things that in the moment with other things that were going on, kind of just there wasn't enough bandwidth for anybody to kind of focus on it. So I'm hopeful that, you know, we're in a place now where we can do that again. Okay. Um, next up is solidarity space. There is not a whole lot to, uh, to report on that right now. Um, just the the, did anybody have questions about the information in, in the update? I mean, the a beautiful banner was put up and within two days it was cut down and, and um, we had to file a police report and that's kind of where it is right now. So it's super unfortunate. Um, it's definitely making me and Shelly Gilbride from the I House kind of step back and look at kind of what you know, as far as putting a piece of public art there, how we need to be thinking about that. I actually am planning to meet um, next week with our police chief just to sit down and really think through, you know, what we can be doing proactively with a number of things that are going into Central Park to ensure that, um, you know, that we're kind of doing our due diligence to make sure we're doing things in the right way. And if there are any protections we can put in place and anything we should be aware of. Um, and I think, I think what is going to happen, I expect at the next meeting, um, that I'll probably have from you a final report from my house. And, um, I think what they are going to do is wrap up their piece of it and suggest that we bring the, the process part for the permanent piece of public art back to the arts commission, um, as kind of the next step. So any questions about that? That wasn't really the initial plan um, and the way this went out it was going to be the process was going to be implemented through iHouse with solidarity space but um we just it doesn't feel like that's a good match anymore for for kind of where things sit and um you know a lot of things happened in the last few years that they weren't anticipating that we weren't anticipating and 
Um, so that will probably come back to us. Okay. Um, no update with Poet Laureate right now, except that she, um, Julia has had a kind of family medical situation that she is attending to. And so she has kind of to put a pause on her Poet Laureate um, work. And as soon as I have updated information on that, I will bring it to you. Um, right. As of right now, I think she's still planning to do the Hope River project, but we had not set a date for that yet. Um, Commissioner Sandra, do you have any, do you have anything to add to that? That's Well, I attended the presentation at, uh, and the, the, Sort of celebration of the completion of the project at Emerson and it was really wonderful. Uh, she worked so hard on that and there were all these guest speakers and the students poetry was featured in this Hope River which if you don't know about it, it it's you walk and you have a QR code and you hear the students reading their own poems at various places about the environment and it, it, the whole school had a celebration and, and the kids were super excited about it. So it was really a success and the whole school wants it to happen again. And also uh, they got some money to put out a book, like a fancy sort of artist book of these poems printed. And um, I am actually helping her put together a short sort of promotional video so it can be sent out to maybe possibly people who might be willing to consider putting it in lots of other schools. So I did a bunch of shooting for her of the events as they happen and I'm supposed to edit a video, but because of this family emergency, uh, she's sort of taking a little pause right now, I think, but more will be revealed. Thanks. Okay. Oh. Um, the wastewater treatment. Is that what's next on there? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see Julia. I didn't see the poet laureate. It looked like he maybe jumped, but after ecology and solidarity, we wanted to hear about the wastewater treatment plant. Sorry, that. I'm looking. I'm looking at the um, the arts update, and I'm I can be following this too. So, um, the wastewater treatment update is that um, I reviewed uh, Brett. Brett Snyder and uh, Claire Nakawan, you know, from Cheng and Snyder gave me a draft report for their, for the kind of culminating report for the work they've been doing. So um, they have that back and are working on the final version of that. And once that comes through to us, then it will inform kind of the next phase of actually rolling out um, calls for artists, which I can't believe because we've been working on this for like, six years or something um but but that's fine we have so many things in the queue right now but it's just as well that we're, we don't have it like instantaneously but but roughly that they broke it down was to um award kind of tiers of grants so a certain number of what they were calling mini grants that would go out to different um you know types of different artists in the community and then some medium grants and one or two larger grants and kind of distributing that, um, you know, a, a piece of that taking place at the wastewater treatment plant, but then the vast majority of it taking place in and around town and the wetlands. So that's exciting. And hopefully we'll have that report by the next meeting. Um, UC Davis Institute for the Environment. We were able to kind of expedite the permissions process, which was great. So we got um, the city put out a particular kind of certification that they use to um, get permissions to work on historic properties. And that was passed, there were no issues with it. So, um, so essentially we have permission to move forward with that mural project and um, that's great. It's an exciting project. And I'm working right now with, um, Julianne Ballou from the Institute for the Environment, just the two of us to come up with um, with the legal documents. I mean, we're not developing them, obviously, like some attorneys are, but um, like the required legal documents to allow this sort of complicated process to happen where we give universities institute permission to put artwork on the wall. There's a contract with the artist about the artwork, and then also a contract with the adjacent property acknowledging that the city um, 
you know, that this, that when and if that property develops and covers the mural that they have permission and we know that might happen and everybody's on board with that. So, um, so that's super exciting. So we should have a fantastic mural downtown sometime, you know, this, this project's moving forward pretty quickly. And it's, this is like the kind of great scenario when we have another partner in the city who has kind of the bandwidth to do some of the implementation work. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and that will be focusing again on climate change and food projection. So it should be something really relevant in our community, something that really, you know, has a, a you know, a value driven piece of art. So not just something that's pretty and attractive, but something that actually tells a story about something that's happening in our community and something that's important to our community, something that's based in the academics of the university. So um, it's great. Like this is the kind of art that I'm excited about putting up around our city more and more. Where is the location? It is the rear wall of the Varsity Theater. So if you are, um, if you're facing the front of the movie theater, that's across from Seasons Restaurant, I'm trying to like spell a picture. Pretend you're standing at the entrance to Seasons Restaurant. Across the street is like all the mosaic benches, the movie theater, and then there's a parking lot to the right of the movie theater. And this is kind of the back wall of the parking lot, which is actually the back of the varsity theater. So it's a big giant blank wall. Great. I know where it is, very central. Yeah, it's very visible. It's very central. It's big and blank. Um, so any questions about that? Great. What's next? The public art collection. Item D. Great. Um, so we are in a closer to finished contracting point with the concrete contractor for both balance beam and totem, frog totem. <laughs> and um, we just had a brief meeting with the school superintendent just to make sure they're aware that we're putting the sculpture into a space adjacent to the high school parking lot to make sure there weren't any concerns about it because it has a nude figure on it. We just want to cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's. Um, and we are gonna be putting up one more last round of signage there just with a coming soon um, note about it and then doing a press release also about these two pieces that will be coming soon. And that should be happening in the next three weeks. Um, and then after that, we will be, as soon as, as soon as the concrete contractor is available and ready, then we'll be moving forward with those um, installation projects. Next is, any questions about those? Just a quick comment. I was uh, Sarah Zimmerman, who was the previous chair, was actually staying at my house for a few weeks. And she was so excited to hear that the frog totem is happening because she was the one that went to visit the artist and pick the piece out. So yeah, it's been a long time in the works. Yes. It's, yeah. it's really wonderful. I mean, a lot of process went into selecting that particular piece and transporting it and acquiring funds for it and all of that. So it's, that. it's the end of a long, a long process. Long process. The cyclist. The cyclist. So um, in between our last meeting and, and this meeting, um, Commissioners Santer and French did some great reconnaissance. Um, Commissioner French had a great suggestion to, um, to create a space for the piece, kind of um, to, de to design and build a little like a kiosk that would have maps on it. Um, and then um, Commissioner Santer, did you bring up the Amtrak building? I can't even remember now. Yeah, well, yeah. Not, but the one across from Amtrak. Yeah, so there's, um, the, there's a small office building that is actually owned by the city and it's where the Downtown Davis Business Association office is located. And it's just this kind of odd little building where the Amtrak bus picks up if you've ever picked up anyone from the Amtrak bus. It's kind of right behind Village Pizza. Um, it's, and I, I think it's probably a perfect spot for this. It's just a very small building with a flat roof. It belongs to the city. It's really easily accessible. It's like right when you come into town on Amtrak. So we're in the process right now of seeing if we can get permission, um, and if structurally it's sound to put the sculpture on it. So if it is, that would be, um, 
a great and relatively easy thing to accomplish. Um, so I think at this point, like we're looking at that as the first option, although Commissioner French's idea is great to just be a little more involved because we'd have to design and commission something and find a location for it. But um, I would say like we look at that more if this um, existing building doesn't work. And does anybody, did I put a picture of that in the? There was yeah. a picture of the building. Yeah, so there was a picture of the building. I'm gonna share my screen for one quick second. That's okay. Is that showing up for people? Yes. So um, yeah, so it would go on top of this little building and it would be kind of like a nice little beacon when people are coming into town or when they get off the Amtrak, you would see it on top of there. Sorry, that was quick. <laughs> so any questions about that? All right. Okay. So quick updates on other work. The Jesse and I have been working closely with um, Tito Delgado and Marianne not 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 I'm not, not gonna pronounce her name. Are two artists who are working on the F Street project, Mariam Wheat Atnahu. And um, I included in the arts update the, um, the draft of the central figures, which I can share again just to sort of share with you what, what you're looking at. So um, if you, if you remember when um, the type of work that, that Tito has been designing, it's these very rich layered images. So this would kind of be the backdrop for a number of other figures that would be layered over this and then mixed in with some other smaller historical figures. Um, and these are all three images that we got from the Yolo County archives, looking really specifically at um, first at tomato agricultural work in the area and then kind of more broadly at agriculture. So it's a tomato harvester in the middle and a farm worker on the right, and then some almond sorters on the left. Um, and then we, Jesse primarily coordinated with um, high school, several high school art classes at Davis uh, Senior High School. And we had a Zoom call with the artists and the students and um, the students went off and spent several weeks doing some photography work and then shared images with the artist. And he selected three or four of those that are also going to be intermixed with this. So it's cool that it'll have these historic images, then we'll have contemporary photographs by high school students. And then um, there are about 30 historical images that are going to be much smaller and kind of layered into this. And then um, additionally, he does like the kind of like air spray glaze treatment. Um, did that, did my image just switch? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of um, remind you, because I think what he'll be doing will be most similar sort of to something like this, um, you know, sort of using human scale and having these overlapped images of, you know, scenes of things, people that are moving throughout the space, and then these kind of color washes over things. So any questions about that? I have, I have a question about that lady in the curlers. Yes. <laughs> that is my question. Like what, what it, it's kind of an odd image, I think. We have been having a lot of discussions around it also. Um, it's it we're it's in a weird territory now where we gave him, you know, a, a number of pictures that kind of fell into the criteria of what we were looking for. And then he picked them and we went back to him with some suggestions and then he kind of refined it. And um, is it, I mean, is it the curlers specifically that are in the question? Yeah, it's just a little odd. I mean, I don't know like what what's going on there. And of course there's lots of things that artists can do. He could remove those curlers if they just, yeah. the curlers look odd. Although, I mean, because you you've already silhouetted these images so you've already taken things out so it's not like i'm asking would be asking him to do something he hasn't already done yeah there's already been a lot removed from these yeah. images 
it, they are <laughs> they are very curious <laughs> i don't really know like what the story was with them or any of these particularly but i think we could definitely go back to him and ask him how he feels about removing them i mean i kind of had the same thought it it's really hard to tell if it is um you know if it is normal or why she's wearing curlers like i wish i knew the whole story behind it so you know if, if you want that feedback that's what this process is for um, yeah it's just the kind of thing just as in my experience that will turn out to be like people say oh that one with the lady with the curlers it's just it's a quirky element that it might not stand out as much once you have all these other images in there it, it might it, because these are you say the three main images but there's going to be all these other images so it, it might not be so so very dominant but i just i don't see that we need to invite that kind of attention yeah to make yeah. it look you know silly really i mean why would we want our public art to look silly just for no good reason yeah um I think I that's really valid. Are, yeah. I was saying my eyes also drawn to that. And I also like was obsessing on on questions in my head about why she has curlers. And I think it's just something about she's just because she's front facing, it, it's just the most prominent kind of image of the three. But again, if with the with the other layered images, you know, it, it may be that it's not as uh, invasive. But right, yeah, right now it just uh to me dominates my my reaction to it. Commissioner Smith. Um, I'm just thinking the, these are images that have to do with uh, harvesting tomatoes. Is that because of the Hunt's tomato factory nearby or just agricultural uh, products in general? But anyways, yeah, um, a whole lot of UCD students worked <laughs> at the Hunt's factory. <laughs> um, you know, they did the night shifts. They they made a lot of money in the summer. <laughs> Uh, working just right across the street, <laughs> essentially, and down uh, Covell from that corner. And so, what I see are are adults. You know, I don't I don't know if you can incorporate more sort of younger images in there or what. Or um, I mean, there was really honestly, it was maybe there aren't any. And the other yeah. thing I just wanted to say is just that image with the woman in the curlers. I can't see her hands. It almost looks like her hands are amputated. At just the way that's the, the image looks and yeah. maybe it's because she's holding like a cabbage or something I don't know I don't know but it looks to me it looks like her she's a w a double amputee almost and it's, it's a little disturbing <laughs> I think in the real image I mean she has tomatoes in her hands like I Does actually spent okay. a long time making sure these images were authentic and yeah. like, weren't like oh here's a farmer but actually they're harvesting carrots um, like it is a real tomato harvester in the middle and she has tomatoes in her hands and then yeah. almonds well, guess, were actually yeah. a big local crop in Davis prior to that. But um, Ammons, what, yeah. I think in the real image, you'll be able to see that she has tomatoes in her hands and well, also probably good. there will yeah. be more like visual things happening there. So I was just going to, I mean, but just in general, it wasn't just um, farm workers that were doing the harvesting. A lot of UCD kids were making a you know basically supporting their tuition yeah by having jobs in the summer well i wish they had taken more pictures <laughs> because we had only worked with the pictures that were in the county archive and it was really actually kind of hard to find yeah people working there i'm sure yeah, there lots of um you know lots of interesting i mean you know this would be a great opportunity when this artwork comes out to kind of reach out to the community and ask for people's stories about connections with the cannery. I mean, this was specifically, we specifically requested, um, and, you know, and the artist did like things that had to do with the cannery and production there and with yeah. harvesting with tomato agriculture. Um, in fact, if you, if I could indulge a little bit, um, my brother-in-law drove a tomato truck and he had a tomato truck with a, on top of the cab, there was an air conditioning unit that did not work. Right. So he, he was driving around this truck in the summer when it was 100 plus whatever. But when he rolled into the um, the way station, you know, with his tomatoes, he always rolled up his windows to make it look like he had the air conditioning truck and everyone else didn't. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. Yikes. And, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, 
you know, this is something for us to think about with any public art, like this, obviously storytelling is kind of, you know, at the root of the images that are being incorporated. And I think there are probably a lot of people in our community that are connected in some way with something that happened at the cannery, whether it's, whether it's from someone in their family working there, or whether it's from like memories of like the smells during the summer or the tomatoes it was on the side smelling. of the road. Yes. Um, you know, and it'd be a super fun time in conjunction with the rollout of the art just to yeah. reach out to the community for some sharing around those things. Yeah, yeah. And and I regret that I have to bounce off this Zoom to go on to another meeting. My apologies. But um, yeah, I think this this will work out pretty well in the end. Okay. Thank Can you. I all right. Commissioner Carr. Um, I was just curious, did any was there any press or did anyone capture any of this story of working with the students? I think it's like such a cool part of this public art. And is if they didn't, is there a way that we can kind of capture that? I mean, we're talking years and years and years here. It wasn't just a no, I'm sorry. Occurrence. Carol, I meant the, the current I high meant school the process. student. Yeah, I, I just think like the incorporation of, of te local teens into the process and their vision being on that wall is like, you know, oh, it's just yeah. an exceptional thing to share out um, in some way. And I don't know. I don't know that we, I don't, I don't know what our role is in that, if anything, but it, it feels like a missed opportunity not to to capture process in this particular case. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, I forgot to hit record on our Zoom call that we had with the artist and the students. <laughs> um, but we do have, you know, I mean, we have all of our correspondence with them and we have the particular students. And I think, um, you know, I don't think the students' vision is so much in here. I think the artist gave them kind of some particular things and they went out and shot them. And then, but he did pick from, you know, we had, I don't know, probably, 30 or 40 images or something like that that he went through and selected from. And I think when, when the artwork is revealed, well, one of the things is when they come install it, we'll be inviting all those students back to actually help and work directly with the artist. And I think that will be a great time to put some press, like, you know, when they're actually yeah, yeah. physically in the same place and, and being able to install their own images on the wall. So um, I think that's like a really tangible time to kind of tell that story more. Yeah. Okay. I just I hear so much about vandalism and I think the stories behind yeah. the public art are such a kind of an I don't solve that completely, but to know yeah. your contemporaries were involved in it in some way is kind of powerful. Yeah. And I think I'm not really... saying teens are the ones doing it. I'm just saying yeah. I think the more you put faces to art and stories to art, it's pretty neat. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I think that was really deliberate like with this being near the high school and knowing if high school students had a role in it, that they would maybe have more of a role of invested like ownership of it and protection of it. And yeah, um, you know, and there are a couple of kids who will be forever represented on it also. <laughs> so yeah, it's so great. They have like a cyclist and a skateboarder and a man walking by and some kids on bikes, I think. So it's a nice representation. Cool. Great. That's great. And um, yeah, so if you could pass along, I don't know. I mean, it would take me two seconds to Photoshop those curlers out. And I, just I know, like, I know. <laughs> they're going to look, they're, anyway, I just think it's going to look odd in the end. So anyway, that's- I think it's a good suggestion. And, and I will, um, you know, ultimately let him make the artistic decision, but let him know that that was our concern and interest in asking kind of how that fits in when the whole picture is, yeah. when the other imagery is mixed in with it. Great, but it looks very cool. I'm excited to see it. I am too. I mean, it's obviously hard to tell from this image because there's going to be so much more going on and then there's going to be like 30 or 40 of these much smaller tiles that'll kind of be distributed, mixed in with this and then spread out to the sides of it of the individual historical images that'll just be silk screened on the individual tiles. Um, yeah, I'm excited to have some new... <laughs> some completely new art. Like it just feels like we're working on these babies for so long and then finally they're gonna <laughs> happen. Um, Can I ask a question really quickly? Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Hi there. So this is, a, this is gonna be tile, it's gonna be where? So this is gonna be around the corner of the F Street, like right across from the Davis Art Center, the corner that wraps around the Little League field. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So yeah, so these will be individual tiles. 
kind of this will be one bigger sort of block of tile and then there'll be smaller tiles that'll fit on those individual kind of it's like kind of if you go out there love are like these concrete blocks that make up that retaining sure. wall okay mm -hmm. and then i uh, you know the 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 image that everyone is talking about with the woman with their with their rollers is she i guess this is exactly the way that it's going to be because she i don't know like i feel like if she was maybe not as prominent it would not be such a you know such a focus um, but, but I, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like it brings some realism and representation, right, to the folks that were doing this work. I mean, my mom did a lot of this type of work when she was a teenager, and, um, and there are pictures of her out in public with rollers in her hair. So, you know, I think it was a, it was a, definitely something that was, that was real yeah. at that time. So, I don't know. I, I just don't mind it so much, I think. Well, I think that's important input. And I think, you know, I would like to talk to the artist more and I, um, and I would like to maybe do some more sort of research in our community and get feedback. Like that is really key. I mean, we don't want to put something up that comes across as being sort of, um, like demeaning at all or yeah. like to me it felt like for, like a really personal image like here's somebody but uh, you know who's doing something that we normally associate as sort of like a thing you do personally but obviously she's like you can't tell this from the picture but she's in the dirt in the field like with tomatoes in her hands um so you know so maybe it's worth having a little bit more conversation before we do anything or kind of getting the artist's take too on like why he selected this image and what it means to him and um yeah, to me, it's that question of what is the most respectful way to show this farm worker? Is it more respectful to show her exactly as she was um, while she was doing this work? Or is it more respectful to not show this really personal image, um, you know, without the curlers? <laughs> For some reason, it hadn't even occurred to me that they could just be photoshopped out. That wasn't like one of the things in my mind. But um <laughs> It's a, I think that would be a good solution if that's what we land on, that it would be more respectful to show her without. Um, and I'm really thankful for everyone's input because we've been grappling with this, as Rachel said. Yeah, but I, it does make me think like I would be curious to talk to some other people who maybe, you know, have a close connection to this type of work. And, um, you know, like Gloria, what you just said about your mother is like, helpful to picture like what feels like it might be inappropriate to us now maybe is more authentic and we don't want to shy away from it but be more I don't but it, but depict it as it was so I don't know this is like one of those very challenging things where without the back context of this and without knowing who this person is it's really hard to kind of guess um but in any case, we can take that information back to the artist and at least start there and see what he says and if he has feedback about it. Anything else about that? Yeah, that seems good to get those perspectives. So, yeah. that's, and that seems like a good next step. So, okay. So, N Street. So, N Street, we are, um, we had a preliminary meeting with CJ Roughgarden, the metalsmith artist who we have um, commissioned for that metal stage structure. So um, she has some great ideas. She is gone for the next approximately two months. So where we've landed with that is um, I'll be working with the parks department to finish, they still need to do the concrete slab that's gonna go under the metal stage structure. So that is moving forward. And then CJ is going to do some kind of community outreach with the N Street neighborhood, probably sometime in May. Excuse me, that you will all be invited to participate in if you like. And um, going with the sort of a loosely starting with plants or like oversized plants or primitive uh, kind of like um, like dinosaur era plants. That's <laughs> not the word I'm thinking of. Prehistoric. Prehistoric. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
to as a starting point. So something that can tie in with the existing art um, in that park right now, which is a dinosaur bench and a dinosaur mural, but which also if those things like change in the future, that the stage structure can still stand on its own and doesn't feel out of place. Um, so that'll be coming back to um, to the to the group for some more design work, but that's exciting that that's moving forward and currently like roughly targeting around July for that to happen. Um, so look toward that coming like in late summer, kind of depending on when and how quickly the concrete work in the park can take place. And um, we, Joseph Fletcher, our theater manager, did an amazing mock-up of looking at the stage. Um, there, there was a lot of effort expended to make sure that there was power there in the appropriate places that we wanted it to be able to support live performance in that space. It's a very small, wonderful little intimate space. It's a, it's a tiny little stage, but it's going to be great for like small performances, small music, things going on. And also I think just for kids playing in the park, because it'll be just a nice little fun stage where anybody who wants to can get up and just mess around. Um, uh, so that'll be great. We're going to integrate, there will be integrated electrical and actually some integrated lights there so that people that are using it can have the, can have access to just come and flip on some simple theatrical lights. So it, we're trying to make it as kind of user-friendly as possible. So I'm really excited about that. Um, any questions about that? Great. Okay. I don't see, um, Jesse, next can you pop the PowerPoint back up? The Russell Greening City Hall Mosaic Bench is next. Right, so not a lot of upgrade update with that. Um, that project is currently scheduled at City Hall for about a year out. So we have contracted with Wes Horn, the artist, and he is gonna move forward with making that work, but it, <clears throat> it will kind of be waiting on the, um, the project to take place at City Hall. But his piece, just as a reminder, is there's going to be like a 40 foot curved seat bench in front of City Hall facing out to Russell and he'll be doing the design work for um, Mosaic to go on that. And and just a note, there's a good example right now at, at the co-op that's new, correct? Mm -hmm. That's um, kind of gives you a little taste because some people were having a hard time um, visualizing from the mock up. What it was going to look like so i encourage you to go check out the new bench at the co-op um not the newly painted one but the mosaic one um it's really it's beautiful really nice. it yeah. has a lot of local birds on it i'm just seeing if i can pull up a picture of it by any chance but i do not see one so <laughs> you'll have to go there um so any questions about that project great so um next up he is the um central park splash pad natalie corona memorial so um i think i came to the commission a number of months back um with information about the central park splash pad and that there was a project there that was going to be kind of fast tracked um, that was going to have some sort of arts integration. And in between, um, there was some community outreach done for the design elements of that, that kind of focused on sustainability, local native plants and flora and fauna, um, celebrating local culture, particularly potentially local indigenous culture and a number of other things. Um, and then subsequent to that, uh, there has been a group in the community who have been working on developing some memorials to Officer Natalie Corona, who, um, as you all recall, was shot and killed in the line of duty about four years ago. And um, they landed on creating a place with, integrated into the splash pad that they're calling Natalie's Corner, um, or maybe the whole splash pad is being called Natalie's Corner. So what we're looking at now is trying to um you know do justice to a very respectful and thoughtful memorial piece for her but that also is appropriate in the setting of a children's recreational area and also still can incorporate the original community feedback so i actually think um the the newer feedback that was brought forth in this um kind of second community outreach brought up ideas of children, sunflowers, um, 
scenes of families playing. And I, I think it'll all lend itself from a design standpoint, but I think it's also this opportunity to work with an artist who can um, really do justice to kind of a storytelling component to kind of, you know, this is kind of a classic art challenge to kind of take these different elements that all want to take place in this particular location for the activity that's going to happen there and the different, um, you know, and the fact that it's a memorial and have something that is, it's in our central park. So also have something that has kind of universal imagery in it that is both thoughtful, but not provocative. Um, so that will be happening um, soon. And I don't have details yet exactly what process is gonna be used if the artist is going to be hand-selected through the committee or if it's gonna be a city um, public RFQ process. But um, they have a relatively fast timeline on that project. So I'll, I'll, I'm sure we'll have next, I'm sure next month I'll have more information. Um, any questions about that? And that is actually part of my, um, I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna be meeting with, um, with police chief Darren Pytel. Um, and specifically I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be transparent with everybody here. We have um, this piece, the solidarity space, solidarity space piece that's slated to go near this, the Gandhi piece that is, I'm not exactly sure where that is um, right now in as far as if it's coming back or not or when, but you know, some, some pretty provocative things all kind of clustered very close together and just how we most thoughtfully move forward with them to, you know, to honor the reasons why, it, particularly with, with the Natalie Corona Memorial and the solidarity space, to really honor the reasons why those pieces are there in the first place, but also to put them in in a way that, um, you know, most thoughtfully engages the community to make them be, um, to be welcome pieces in the community. We don't wanna put things in that are going to like clearly become targets. Obviously um, we don't expect artists will want to work on things if they know they're clearly gonna become targets. So, um, you know, so being as proactive as we can about that, doing it in a thoughtful manner. I have a question about that. Are we involved in this process at all? Or are you just letting us know this is happening? Um, I imagine that you will be involved. I just don't really know yet exactly how because it's um it's still not it's i don't think it's been decided yet if the piece is going to be kind of commissioned through this uh what's a group that's being called the natalie corona committee or if it's going to be coming through as a piece of public art through our city's process does that make sense yeah okay but but i think that'll be decided very soon um and then we will, in regardless, kind of, I think members of the Arts Commission will still be involved in the process. Just it may not like come through as a normal piece through our regular process, or it may. <laughs> uh, believe me, when I know, you'll be the first that I tell. <laughs> um, and it's obviously, I'm laughing, but like, it's obviously like a very sensitive topic. There are many city staff who are very close to Natalie Corona and it's, um, it, you know, it's, it's something that everybody here takes very seriously. And, um, and it's a very difficult piece to work on because it means a lot to a lot of people. And we know that it's also coming at a time when we have, you know, we're honoring a fallen police officer and we're honoring like, right next to it, a piece of public art that's honoring people who have been killed at the hands of police officers. So it's, um, you know, it's a really unique situation that we wanna do very, very intentionally and thoughtfully. Um, so, yes. Does anybody have questions about that or thoughts about it? It's, it seems very touchy, and it does seem like, you know, before anyone, certainly me, has anything to say about it, I want to see what they're suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now, the, um, did I, sorry, I'm pulling up the, uh, I think I accidentally closed my, my art update, but um, I mean, right now we have the sort of two sets of community input. And I think the step is with whatever artist is selected, they would work with both kind of the, you know, pre-developed input, which is really pretty generic at this point. It's like sunflowers and children playing and 
um, you know, youth and celebrating young people in the community. Um, I mean, and, and Natalie was only 22. So, you know, she's included in that. Like she was very, very young. Um, but I think also a big part of it would be, you know, meeting with and receiving stories from her family and her colleagues and integrating those in a way that is, you know, that is universally accessible through visuals, but also not like, not like, you know, you don't want kids walking into a splash pad talking about like somebody that got shot across the street. So like how to do that in a way that is effective in that setting. Um, Council member Partida, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I just, um, so the, some of the conversations I've heard around this particular uh, piece is that it's more a dedication to Natalie as a person rather than to Natalie as a police officer. And mm -hmm. she, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot that she did in the community as a person, right? And so, in the, and a big part of her was dedicated to, so, uh, you know, that, I think that this particular installation is gonna be focused on, on that aspect of her life. Yeah. Do you, that's important feedback. And um, you probably were in more of those meetings and I guess um, Commissioner French was also, did it, do either of you have more, like any more anecdotal kind of feedback from that um, input session that took place in the park a number of months back? Um, I mean, I know Michael, you you came and reported back to us after that and I, I have notes on it. There was just really minimal like documentation that came out of that. Um, I mean, Gloria, what you just said, um, was really helpful. Just that, even just that statement that it's meant to be more about her as a person than her as a police officer. Um, you know, that's useful. And I think, I mean, when when we do this, like whether it goes to an artist that's hand selected by the committee or whether it comes through as an RFP, like that will come back. Um, you know, it'll it'll come back for feedback from this group as guidance with kind of how we want to direct the design elements of it. So, um, so this is more of just a getting ready for that conversation. As far as the input that was given from folks at that um, at the park, um, I didn't hear a whole lot from you know the the particulars of of people um, that came through. I know that there was somebody who was a little concerned that it would. Um, that it would uh, block the view, I guess, of the rest of the park. And then somebody at, at public comment the other night at city council said that they thought it would be better put at um, Walnut Park because it would take up so much green space. Um, but those are the only two sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, inputs that I've heard from the public. Okay, thanks. Anything else about that topic right now? Doesn't look like. Okay, thank you. Um, Varsity Theater Mural, we already addressed that earlier. That's the yeah. project with the UC Davis Institute. Okay, so we're on to item E. Great, okay. So collection care and maintenance, I'm gonna share with you um, my screen again. Um, <laughs> this is an image, so are you seeing the collaboration sculpture? Yes. So this is the repaired sculpture, it's kind of funny. Um, the, but it'll hopefully be way more functional than the last version of it, which was sort of, um, if you recall, this piece fell over a number of months ago. It, um, the, it was on these very sort of delicate feet, and I, the sculpture just failed and collapsed forward. Um, so it was repaired, and this is how it was repaired, and it was replaced up there. So it is a new, improved, and reimagined collaboration. Any questions about that? 
I don't know, honestly, if he's planning on going back and mosaicing the feet or if this is it. So if anybody does have feedback on that. So where is this? This is in the parking lot in front of Bank of America downtown. So um, this oh, picture is okay. taken from the corner of 4th and E, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner from, French. I'm from Jersey. It looks like a mafia hit on a piece of art. Like that's what they would used to do, encase their feet in cement and drop them in the Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does have a little bit of that kind of like. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, for one, I'm really grateful that, that he fixed it and for, for a very, very reasonable amount and reinstalled it for us. Um, but, you know, like, if we wanted to ask for feet to be mosaic, we could request something like that. I mean, I don't mind it like that. I think it's such a, like, quirky piece to start out with. It kind of feels like it just works with it. Um, and I'm glad it's back and he repaired the hand and some other parts of it, too. If you haven't been out to see this piece like up close in person, it's worth going. It just has so many different little odds and ends on it. And it um, it's called collaboration because it was actually um, like produced a number of years ago at the ceramics conference. And I think they just had the structure of this out during the conference and invited people to come over and use bits and pieces of broken um, ceramic from all kinds of things. And it was collaboratively built by students from all over the state. So it's really fun to look at. All right. So um, that's been repaired and taking us back to other, Jesse, if you don't mind pulling that. Um, the Davis Centennial Seal is next. Okay, great. So I don't have an update on repair of that. I'm still, I'm actually meeting Susan Shelton tomorrow. Um, she, we're still waiting for somebody who's gonna try to drill some drain holes underneath it. Um, so that that's kind of, no, no major update with that yet, but it's it's still being addressed. Um, and uh, this is not as far as maintenance, but just as a quick update as we are working again, I have a new um, UC Davis public scholar. Her name is Cristabel Camacho Gutierrez, and she's amazing. And she is going to be the next scholar working on um, doing doing a, you know, a kind of uh, tandem piece of research and developing some sort of tools for us that'll help with interpretation and education with the SEAL. So I'm excited to work with her and I'll bring you more information as we move forward working with her. Um, money has been awarded to the Old East Neighborhood Association and they're going to be redoing the um, street mandala that was first done with Mark Rivera um, back, I think, in 2014. So that should be re, um, redone soon and probably as a call for community um, engagement like it was done originally. So I'll let you know as soon as we have a date for that. And if anybody's interested in helping, that's a really fun, um, fun thing to participate in. And um, no update on source resource or Club Sidra. We're still waiting, just kind of continually working with, um, with our parks partners and waiting till we have bandwidth to, to restore these pieces, fix them. And then um, we are finally looking at, um, I don't, it's not up here, but um, we're finally trying to address the plaque on the Quercus mural that's been this sort of like thing hanging on our shoulder just to replace this silly plaque for years. So we're, Jesse's moving forward on that. So that's great. And um, is that on the next? That's it. Next is item seven. Okay, great. So any questions on any of those maintenance issues? Fantastic. Okay. Um, so upcoming meeting items. Um, here, actually, roof or chair center. Sorry, I'm trying to get into the habit of calling everybody by their formal appropriate names in these meetings. So Commissioner Santer, um, I will hand this back to you to um, oversee these next items. Okay. <laughs> it's just soliciting them from the group, really. Oh, right. I'm just going down on my agenda, which I keep up on a separate screen. So does anybody have any item that they would like to include for the future in our meeting? Anyone or? No? Nothing? No? Okay. Great. I, my big thing is, as I said, is I'm speed ahead on the 
on the Recology Project. And I'm glad to hear that we have some other people that are interested because I think it would be really great to get involved. So that's that's was my long range item and it's up. So if no one else has anything else, our next meeting will be held on Monday, March 13th at 6 p.m. in person. Are we meeting in the same, the same room that we met in before? Yeah, so we are meeting in, we meet in the um, city council chambers building, but in the conference room in there. So is there anybody that's not familiar with where that is? Okay, so, um, so what, um, ha so have, has, sorry. So a couple of things can happen here. One is prior to that meeting, I'm happy to meet up with anybody who hasn't been here and just show you where it is, take you there. So you're familiar, so you are familiar with it before the meeting and know where it is and know how to get there and everything like that. Um, it is, you know, it's at City Hall. So it's located at 23 Russell, which is at the corner of 5th and B Street. And what I'll do is I'll send out an email to everybody and anybody that wants, um, you know, is welcome to set up a time. And I'm happy to just take you in there, walk you across, show you the layout. It's it's just a conference. It's just a like a boardroom. It's a room with a big table. <laughs> I feel uh, confident. It's very I <laughs> <laughs> um, And if anybody has any kind of special accommodations they need, because I know this is an interesting transition, you know, between being in Zoom, being at home, and then coming back to a space in person. So. If there's anybody, anything anybody needs, just reach out to me privately and let me know, and I'll make sure we have that set up. Um, and just, I wanted to go back to the long-term agenda items thing, um, because Commissioner Sanford, you had mentioned the arts and private development to me at some point. Did you want to put that on? Oh, right. That's right. Yes. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, we have our 1% for art for public development, but I think it would be great to work on trying to get 1% for art in private development as well. And I know that's a very long range goal, but I think it would be great to begin conversations about it. Be so, and I'm gonna show you something right now since I'm in my office. Because I just happen to have a friend who was chair of the Davis Civic Arts Commission quite a long time ago, who Ooh. was the one who got the 1% for art instituted. So we know it can be done. So we actually spent quite a long time a few years ago getting ready for this and developed um, this beautiful brochure to advocate for this to take place. So we're totally ready to roll that out again. Um, it, it just to give you all, a, well, I'm not going to give you all a background. We'll put it on agenda in the future and we'll talk about yes. it then. Next, <laughs> um, we, can, we can have a full background on it next exactly, meeting. It'll be great exactly. in person. So we can right. all pass around the brochure and look at it. Well, better than that, I have an entire box of them and I'll bring one for each of you. Excellent. You will, you will get goodies, goodie bags next week. I mean, that's one nice thing about being in person is we can actually use real tools in our hands. That's um, right. We can all take home those maps. I, I took a stack home. I stopped by City Hall and took home a stack of the art maps and gave them out to everyone I could see, which I think would be great for all the commissioners to do. Maybe we should have that on the agenda. Everyone has to give out maps. <laughs> yes, I'll bring you maps. I'll bring you brochures. We will have all kinds of things. <laughs> um, great. Well, before we adjourn, does anybody have any last questions, comments, anything? Well, it will be nice to meet everybody in person. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Will be very nice. I will wear a hat, and everyone else is invited to wear. Oh, yes, <laughs> our celebratory hats. We talked about that at the last meeting. Okay, I'm going to put I that will, in the reminder. <laughs> I will. I will be flying in the last minute because I finished teaching piano at five forty-five. So. <laughs> okay, maybe no. That's okay. You're. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I can have a hat. <laughs> I'll wear okay. two hats to make up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, I okay. will look forward to seeing everybody. Wonderful. So we can adjourn, right? All right. It was delightful to see you all as always, and I will see you in March. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Night. Bye -bye. Good night.